Hey kids, Mr. Murray's Mathland here. We're uh, taking a look at a classic related rates problem about cones specifically. And uh, this one, we have a conical water reservoir, has a radius of 15 feet and is 20 feet deep. Water is leaking out of the reservoir at a rate of six cubic feet per hour. Find the rate of change of the depth of water at the moment when the radius of the surface water is six feet. Okay, lots of stuff going on there. And for some reason, things always seem to be leaking in the calculus world. I don't know, they gotta check these things out. But let's take a look at um, breaking this down. Uh, let's identify what's given and what we're trying to find. So what we know right now is that the, the reservoir has a radius of 15 feet. So that is not changing here. That Here's the conical reservoir. There's the radius. That's 15. It's 20 feet deep. So that would be referring to the altitude or the height of the cone. <clears throat> and that is 20. Again, not changing. And water is leaking out at a rate of 6 cubic feet per hour. So the cone itself, the volume isn't changing, but it's got water in it. And so, you know, at any given moment, there's a small cone of water on the inside here. And that cone of water has a radius and a height of its own. And that radius and that height, uh, those are changing since the water is leaking out. And so the size of that cone of water is constantly changing. So when it refers to the water leaking out at a rate of six cubic feet per hour, the units are a dead giveaway that's referring to the rate of change of its volume. Um, dV dt is negative six since it's losing at a rate of six, feet, uh, six cubic feet per hour. Uh, that's a negative rate of change. And we are trying to find the rate of change of the depth of water. So really trying to find the rate of change of this right here, the height of the cone of water. So dH dt is what? When the radius of the surface water, so that's referring to this radius, at the moment when that r is 6. And you know, since the other two aren't changing at all, there's no real need to call them h and r. They're, they're not variables, they're constants, they're fixed. But R and H referring to that water, those are changing. So I'm gonna leave those as variables for right now. Okay, <clears throat> so now I'm looking for DH DT. Here's the classic thought process when you've identified what you have and what you're trying to find in calculus terms. I have DV, I want DH. So V and H are really the two variables I wanna relate. Uh, before I take the derivative, if possible. So the volume of any cone, I'm sure you remember these from your geometry days, but in calculus they would typically give you a, uh, a formula like this. The volume of a cone is always one-third the area of the circle, pi r squared, times the altitude, height. And if you were to do the derivative of this right now, you would need a product rule for this part of it, r squared times h. Um, but they don't give you dr dt, and they're not asking you for dr dt. So ideally, you would say, I really would like this all in terms of v and h, since those are the two rates I care about. Now, it doesn't mean you'll always be able to avoid uh, product rules, certainly. But if you can, it's nice. That's, that's kind of the goal. And to do that, we're going to find a relationship between R and H using similar triangles here. There's this small triangle in the water, and that is similar or proportional to this big right triangle here with the big cone. And so the radius to the height in the small cone will always be equal to the ratio of the big radius to the big height and of course your proportion could be set up any, any number of ways. You could have R over 15 is H over 20 or some similar version of that. But this proportion here is what's going to allow you to solve for either variable in terms of the other. 
And this is kind of nice. This reduces to 3 fourths. If you want to reduce before you do any uh, work with it, r is 3 fourths of h, or r, eight, r over h equals 3 fourths. And I was kind of jumping ahead a bit, but um, so if I cross multiply here, 4r equals 3h, I really want my equation to be all in terms of h. So I'm going to solve for r in terms of h, which I guess I could have just done here by multiplying by h a couple steps back. But I'm solving for r because now I'm going to take that and substitute it into my volume equation before I do any calculus. So 1 third pi, the, r, uh, the radius is always going to be 3 quarters of h squared times h. And now you can simplify this 3 quarters squared, that's 9 sixteenths. And so when I multiply that by that 1 third out in here, that will be 9 over 48 pi times h cubed. And now you've got a formula that's all in terms of v and h. So now let's take its derivative. OK, when I take this derivative, taking it with respect to time, I get, of course, dv dt on the left. Over here, you know, you're using classic power rule since now there's just one variable and it's h. So 3 times that 9 48 will give you 20, no, 27 over 48 or reduce 9 16 pi h squared dh dt. Okay, so now you're at the derivative, so now you can plug in those instantaneous or momentary values. Uh, dv dt, we've been given, is always negative 6, the rate of change of its volume. It's always losing 6 cubic feet per hour. And I want to know what is dh dt at the moment when r is 6. And so to finish this problem off, this is another common thing that pops up in these kinds of problems, is that I need to know, well, what is h at this moment? I've chosen to change it all into h, but when r is 6, what is h at that moment? And so this just requires you using the same proportion that we've based this whole thing on, this similar triangles proportion that, you know, whether you go to here or you back it up to this right here, that at any given moment, r over h equals 15 over 20, or 3 quarters. Might as well work with the reduced one, make my life easier. So r over h, so at that moment, 6 over h would be equal to 3 quarters. So 3h is 24, so h is 8. And so now, I can substitute that in because it's the same moment I'm, I'm referring to. When r is 6, h is 8 at that spot. So we can use that value. And now we can simplify here. That's going to be 64. 16 is going to go into that 64. You know, now it's just a, a reducing game here. But still, don't want to make any silly mistakes. Try and do too much in your head. Um, 16 goes into 64, 4, right? Don't bother multiplying 64 times 9 if you're just going to divide. Be smart about it. Uh, 4 times 9, 36 pi, dh dt. And it should make sense that our dh dt is going to be a negative quantity because we're losing uh, water, we're losing volume, so that height is going to be decreasing. So this is negative 6 over 36 pi, which of course reduces to negative 1 over 6 pi. That's dh dt. And there's our answer, except we're going to, you know, it's a word problem, so we're going to answer with words. And just to translate that in, okay, if dh dt is negative 1 over 6 pi, that means the height, or the depth, if you want to, you know, refer to, call it that, the height is it's a negative rate of change, so it's always nice to use this language in the calculus world. The height is decreasing at a rate of 1 over 6 pi. Notice I don't have to use the negative because that's what the decreasing refers to. It would be kind of redundant. But you do want to include units here. Height is just a, a linear uh, measurement, so our units in this were feet and hours. 
So this would be feet per hour. And there we go. That's one of the more classic uh, problems that tends to give people issues in, in related rates. So hopefully this cleared it up for you a little bit. And if not, of course, as always, feel free to reach out and ask questions. Have a good day, kids, and good luck.